Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, today inshallah we'll discuss the concept of hisbah in Islamic finance. So hisbah is a very important concept in Islamic finance and in Islamic history and civilization. Um, hisbah is something which uh, is um, about uh, to have a check and balance to, to monitor and to, to regulate the Islamic finance. So in this chapter, inshallah, we talk about uh, the concept of hisbah first in uh, Islamic civilization and then uh, we look into hisbah uh, in Islamic finance. So what is hisbah? The Arabic word hisbah, hasin bah, hasabah, uh, Yahsabu or hasaba yahsibu means uh, to count or to, to anticipate Allah's reward. And also there is a similar word is called muhasaba. Is uh, muhasaba means uh, to to check back uh, on on someone uh, on someone's uh, actions whether he did good or wrong to to self uh, to have a self check. Well, uh, the hisbah it also has um, another meaning is to denounce other personal wrongful behavior and also to contemplate by considering the possibility of its outcome that if I do something, what would be the outcome and finally to calculate, estimate and take into account. So these are the literal meaning of, of hisbah. However, the technical meaning of hisbah is given by Imam Al-Ghazali. He said, Hisbah is a comprehensive expression for the duty of enjoining the good and forbidding evil. Uh, so, uh, it is a comprehensive uh, expression on um, something we call amru bil ma'ruf wa nahyanil munkar to uh, to enjoin to order people for doing goods and for forbidding people from evil. So, this is uh, called the hisbah. So, what is this hisbah? Is um, well, hisbah is uh, is a, in a sense it is um, enjoining uh, good and forbidding evil. But in the Islamic history, uh, hisbah is something that it wa used to be a religious institution. So therefore, uh, the Islamic scholars uh, they uh, recommend that hisbah should be a religious institution under the authority of the state. It is the responsibility of the Islamic ruler to have uh, this institution uh, in order to practice uh, the, the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is to, uh, to enjoin good and forbid evil from the society. The state that appoints officials of the state to carry out the responsibility of enjoining what is right whenever people start to neglect it and forbidding what is wrong whenever people start to engage in it. So this is the uh, the official job of hisba, and we can see in many Muslim countries uh, they have this uh, official uh, 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 position or an official uh, in institution of hisba. We can we have uh, like in Saudi Arabia they have even in, uh, in Malaysia I think there there are. Um, some hisbah uh, institutions of, uh, under the, the religious authority. So uh, this is the, the hisbah uh, uh, in institutions. Uh, it actually came from uh, the uh, earlier history of Islam. So what is the purpose of hisbah? The objective of his, uh, hisbah is to safeguard the society from evil and crime. So it may happen that uh, people may deviate, they may fall into crime. Uh, so the purpose of hisbah is uh, to always monitor and to, to protect the society from it doing any evil or crime. And to protect the faith, if uh, the religion of the people, if uh, people involved with something wrong. And with that also the objective is to ensure the welfare of the people in both religious and worldly manners according to the law of Allah. So it's not only about um, uh, 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 religious uh, crimes, but if someone 
uh, does injustice, uh, cheats in the market. So all this uh, to ensure the welfare of the people if something harmful happening to people. So to ensure their welfare is also part of the hisba. Is very hisba is also uh, related to maqasid sharia to to ensure that um, and if any violation of the maqasid sharia in the society, so the hisba will uh, make sure that it uh, it is full uh, that it is implemented the maqasid sharia. And this is the evidence uh, of uh, of hisba. This is the the, the hadith uh, that actually. Uh, establishes the foundation for for hisba. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, uh, "Peace be upon him, that whosoever among you sees an act of wrong, should change it with his hands. If he is not able to do so, then he should change it with his tongue. If he is not able to do so, then with his heart. And this is the weak, weakest of faith. So this hadith says that uh, every Muslim or every believer should uh, do his uh, best to stop an evil from a society. And if he has power, he should change it with his power. If not, at least he should talk. He should use his uh, tongue or his writing uh, to stop it. Uh, if not, then at least he should think uh, in what way he can uh, uh, solve this problem or if he, in what way he can stop this evil thing. So that is this hadith all about and this hadith gives the, the foundation uh, of a hisbah in institutions that in a Muslim society we must have uh, this act of uh, forbidding the evils and ordering good. And if we look into the history of Islam, so as I should say, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is assumed the role of the first muhtasib. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would uh, never be uh, silent when there was anything wrong or any evil is done in front of him. And he would always order people to enjoin people to good, uh, good deeds. So he is the first one who took the, uh, who assumed the role of muhtasib. And after the death of Prophet uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Ibn Umar, during the time of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second caliph of Islam, he laid the foundation of al-Hisbah. Well, it means that he started an official uh, institution of Hisbah. He appointed some people to, to, to monitor in the market, also to uh, monitor uh, certain uh, places uh, to, to help to, and to order uh, them good and forbid evil. So that started, of course, before Umar ibn al-Khattab, uh, the practice of hisbah was there in a personal level. People, the companions of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to do it. But uh, during Umar ibn al-Khattab, he uh, laid the foundation of an institutional hisbah. And during that uh, period of Abbasid, uh, uh, during the 18th century, uh, it extended. Al Hisba had become a full time institution. They, they establish uh, an institution uh, called Al Hisba. They are very in, they are independent in institutions and they played very important role of carrying out this Amru bil Ma'ruf and Nahyan in Munkar uh, during the period of Abbasid. And here I'm going to show you some of the examples of, uh, of Hisba or supervision of market monitoring uh, or uh, monitoring the market. So here is uh, some of the texts uh, that we found from the historical documents where the Islamic ruler is uh, giving uh, directions to the Islamic governor, to uh, the governor of, a, of some uh, states uh, regarding the monitoring of the market. So here the, uh, it says it is necessary for the governor who is seeking justice for his people to supervise the market and entrust a person with the duty of observing the market practices and tests to determine the correct measures on the instruments for weights, uh, which is mawazin, and the measures of capacity mawakil. So here, the Islamic ruler is giving direction to the governor that the ruler must uh, it must ensure that uh, there is a good practice in the market. There is uh, no uh, cheating in terms of 
uh, using uh, in, uh, incorrect measures. Uh, so measures of, the, there used to be two types of measures, measures by weight, uh, an instrument to measure by weight, uh, the, the normal scale, and also there was mawakil, it, it is an instrument uh, to measure the volume. So all this, the, it was the role of the governor to make sure there is no uh, cheating in it. Uh, and then if the official appointed finds someone who has changed them, the person will be punished according to the uh, offense committed and in consultation with the governor. So there will be punishment for them, which is uh, ta'zir under the concept of ta'zir that uh, to, to uh, warn them. And then it continues, the governor must not ignore a situation where counterfeit coins, uh, mubah rajah, appear in the market or coins which have been mixed with copper. So here, uh, the, gov the governor should uh, do hisbah in order to stop any kind of counterfeit coins, the coins that is uh, mixed with um, uh, something else, not the real gold coin. Uh, or even the gold coin mixed with copper, which is nuhas, so they must uh, uh, monitor it to stop it. He should be strict in the matter and investigate the person who produced them. So there should be a strong action should be taken for this. Uh, so these are the punishment. When identified the person involved in this uh, counterfeit uh, in uh, transacting with these counterfeit uh, coins, he should warn them, nakal them, and give an order to punish them. By So how should be the punishment? By parading them in the market area, by driving them from behind so that they will fear the severity of the penalty in the hereafter, which has been revealed for them. And they will also be detained for a certain period of time according to the opinion of the governor. So there will be uh, a, um, a, a, a detrimental uh, punishment that uh, they will give a warning and they will be you know, parade, uh, parading uh, in the market. So how shameful is it uh, for the, that person? So this was the, uh, the practice uh, during the time uh, of, uh, of, of the disease from uh, Abbasid period. Uh, so this was the uh, example of how the Hizbah used to practice and how was the punishment. Finally, the governor then must entrust a trustworthy person to observe the matter so that the people's silver coins, uh, darahim and gold coins, the dananir, will be sound and the coins will be, nukud will be protected. So it shows that there was, it was the responsibility of the governor to, to, and to um, appoint a person, a trustworthy person, to monitor the market, to monitor people's transactions so that there is no uh, cheating in terms of the, uh, using the uh, gold or silver coins. Uh, so this uh, gives us, um, again, uh, uh, a reminder that in this modern day society, we uh, whatever the monitoring that uh, we are doing in terms of finance, uh, the, even the online system, so all of these uh, should have a monit uh, should be monitored, should be regulated, and uh, it is the responsibility of the ruler. So, as uh, so we can see, the the hisba, the importance, and how was it in the in the Islamic history and civilization. So there are some uh, uh, essential elements, some conditions for the person to do his bar and the, there are some stages and the ways to conduct it. If not, uh, we can uh, misuse it in some cases. Uh, so first is the qualification of muhtasib, the person who will uh, who will uh, assume the role of uh, this hisbah, uh, he should have a qualification. If not, sometimes it may uh, lead to something wrong. Uh, like in the case of uh, one uh, in one country that when there was um, uh, a fire in, uh, in a women, uh, in a girl's hostel, and uh, the, muhtas uh, the muhtasib, they arrived there and they didn't allow the, the, the girls to 
uh, to go back home without uh, their mahram, but while they, they were involved in, in a fire. So that um, created criticism uh, among, uh, yeah, among the international community. So uh, um, it is uh, very important that the person who is uh, doing this uh, uh, hisbah, he must uh, have a good understanding of the sharia, uh, and also he must have a good understanding of the common knowledge. Okay. So usually the person should be literally a jazz, a qadi. Uh, because he is judging uh, the action of the people and must have high qualification, means uh, he should have uh, knowledge on fiqh, usulul fiqh, uh, and sharia, Quran and sunnah, maqasid sharia, uh, and, uh, and, ad and um, uh, other uh, essential knowledge. He should be a, a faqih that has a good understanding of sharia. He should be a mature, wise, a pious, a saint, free, and just person. So if someone is not just, he can misuse uh, this too, uh, for his own gain. Uh, and uh, if he is not uh, pious, if he is not fearful, he can also violate uh, in, his, uh, 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 in his action of this hisbah. And he should be capable of distinguishing the permissible from the non-permissible, which is halal and which is not. Especially in cases in the modern days where there are some new uh, issues, new actions, and online uh, uh, people are involved with uh, different types of issues, uh, actions, which may not have a direct text from the Quran. So he should be able to differentiate which is halal and which is haram. And he must be appointed by the state, uh, or if not appointed, should be authorized. Means that he is allowed to, to do. Of course, um, um, well, this uh, condition uh, is uh, for those who are uh, doing the official, who are performing the hisbah officially and specially monitoring the market and others. But uh, it, mm, all of us are actually responsible to. Uh, to do a hisbah uh, in general, but uh, uh, this one, uh, in order to do a specific hisbah, or to, um, to uh, for uh, he must be authorized. Okay, now what are the conditions of the process of al hisbah? So, if we want to um, perform the hisbah, what should be the process? We cannot just go and uh, slap the person and stop him or say bad words. Uh, there are some process of, uh, of doing this hisbah. We should start with uh, good words, with smooth uh, behavior to giving punishment. So that is the, the Islamic way uh, of uh, doing this action. So uh, first, uh, it is uh, already defined as a munkar, wrongdoing or evil by the sharia. So if something which is um, a munkar, we already know that it is something haram, uh, it's a wrongdoing uh, by the Sharia, then we can uh, prohibit it. Sometimes um, um, there are some actions which are a dispute, uh, there is dispute among the scholars and it's not clearly haram. So in that case, we should avoid it uh, to, to, to uh, forbid them. And then uh, it has actual presence, not a hearsay. That that's something wrong, it should be actually done. It's not just a hearsay. We, uh, uh, we do not, uh, didn't see uh, uh, it, then uh, we uh, do the hisbah, it should not be. It is declared to the public without resorting to spying in order to identify the said forbidden act. So, uh, and uh, this is a very important principle that for Muslims, we should not spy uh, uh, to, to know the wrongdoings of the people. So hisbah mostly uh, uh, should be done what people do in public. What are the wrongdoings in the market? Uh, so um, uh, generally, we, uh, we should not be spying. Uh, means what people uh, are doing in the in the uh, in, in inside their house. Uh, so sometimes uh, some uh, of the news that I, I receive that sometimes the Hisba institution they they go to people's house at the middle of the night and then uh, they find out uh, who are at home, whether there is uh, um, uh, somebody. Uh, non mahram uh, is is um, uh, sorry somebody which is uh, uh, 
uh, non mahram is is there so uh, that actually is not in line with the uh, the condition of hisbah because hisbah should focus uh, more on uh, what is apparent what is outside in the public rather than uh, the spying of course uh, there it is uh, uh, there may have some maslaha to to uh, to uh, in, uh, to go uh, people's house in the middle of the night or even in hotel uh, and to, uh, uh, to uh, find out whether they are doing something wrong. Uh, but um, uh, the, ult- the most important thing is uh, to, to forbid people when they are doing something public. And the thing that uh, disturbs me is that uh, some of the Hisbah institutions, they are very... Uh, they they concern on what people are doing uh, at their homes, uh, uh, but they are not saying anything where there are uh, many um, uh, wrongdoings in the public, where people are drinking alcohol, or you can uh, we can see sometimes in uh, in uh, New Year, the thirty first night, uh, the young people, young men and women, they are. Uh, doing something are not Sharia compliant, or some cases uh, even uh, even in the TVs, uh, there are some lot of uh, wrongdoings uh, in, in advertisement and others. But nobody is to, uh, doing uh, uh, this, um, uh, forbidding them. It means uh, it is not the concern of the uh, of the Hisbah institutions that they are not uh, doing anything. Rather, they are more focusing on what people are doing at their home and in uh, checking at the middle of the night. Well, maybe there are some uh, maslaha or benefit for that, but uh, the main concern should be the wrongdoing in the public. And then it is known uh, not necessarily subject to istihad or rigorous and robust interpretation. As I said earlier, that there are some uh, cases where uh, there is no clear injunction from the Sharia. The scholars have differences of opinion. Uh, in ca- for example, uh, uh, attending the Jama'ah prayer, uh, it is um, some of the scholars they say it is uh, recommended, but some said it is uh, it is compulsory. So, uh, in this case, uh, we should not um, uh, we can um, uh, so uh, this is a dispute. Uh, so some. Uh, uh, so if someone does not attend the Jama prayer, so we may not uh, uh, maybe, uh, force him or use the, the hisbah. Or maybe we, we can just uh, give him advice, but uh, we should not treat him that he, he did something uh, evil uh, if, he, if he doesn't attend. So this was an example of, um, of a uh, matter or issue which is, uh, uh, dispu- uh, which is not clear. Uh, or that means which their, their scholars, they have differences of opinion. And then number three, who is subjected to, to, to muhtasif? Means who are the person uh, or what are the cases or issues that uh, we, we should be, the muhtasif, uh, should be muhtasif's concern? Well, uh, the muhtasif's test is comprehensive. Uh, it may extend to prevent damages caused by the animals as I s- um, it is, uh, of course, we know uh, Sharia, any kind of wrongdoings, uh, we need to uh, forbid. So the Muhtasif can not only about religious matters, not only about prayers, um, uh, even if any injustice. If we can see uh, somebody is uh, uh, doing uh, something wrong to an animal, Somebody just uh, uh, threw his uh, his cat from from the top of his uh, house. So that is also the concern. Uh, cases of environmental pollution. People are polluting the environment. That's administration of judiciary premises. Uh, whether the um, uh, people um, the, in the government offices in the, the judiciary they are doing, where they are involved with corruption or doing something wrong. All these come under the Muhtasib's concern. Management and control of economic activities at large, especially those related directly to market. Yes, market speculation, cheating, all this. And of course, uh, now in the online transactions, uh, there, there should be also monitoring to, for the, uh, to make the system is safe. 
and especially when we have a lot of spam, financial spam people. So that is also the concern of the Muhtasib. And then acting steps of uh, Al Muhtasib. So how a person should uh, act or he should play his role uh, he, uh, of uh, Muhtasib or he, if we even these uh, steps are actually su um, suitable for, for anyone, even personally, if we want to uh, give da'wah even to our friends at a personal level. So this is a very important steps that Imam Al-Ghazali, he, he mentioned uh, on how we can do uh, um, hisbah. The first is seeking knowledge of the forbidden, uh, forbidden act, the munkar without spying or forcing others to solicit secret information. So it should not uh, be, uh, the knowledge should not be through spying. If we see something in front of us, we know something in the society is doing in the public, then we know uh, we should start the hisbah without soliciting someone to get the secret information. Number two is to inform the violator of the forbidden if he or she is then ignorant about the wrongdoing. So the first thing that we should do is we tell them or remind them that what you are doing is wrong. Do you know that? Uh, so that is the, the, the first step to, to tell someone. Uh, so, and then after the second, uh, uh, then after that, we should tell him uh, to forbid verbally, say advising not to do. So after that, we should say, okay, this is wrong. You should not do it. Uh, so with a, with a good language. And then after that, to abstract the forbidden through preaching advice and fearing the punishment of Allah. With the good words, we start to talk about um, the punishment of Allah. We forbid uh, them um, and uh, we just start uh, to uh, advise uh, with uh, what is the prohibitions uh, in the Quran or Sunnah. And then we can go a bit more harsh at the next level to chide or to scold with strong words if he doesn't listen uh, he doesn't stop with these uh, Quranic verses then we start, start to use hash words we can uh, chide uh, rebuke the person and then affect the change manually so let's say if somebody is smoking for example so if he, dis he doesn't uh, listen all these good words so we just take the cigarettes for him, from him so that is means affect the change manually and then after that if he still continues to do that thing so we need to threaten the aggressor that things may become worse in the future if he's not uh, reprimanded so if he does not uh, stop uh, we, th we threaten him that there will be a stronger punishment for that and then if he still continues to do we apply physical punishment without using any weapon so we can just uh, slap him a bit or we can just uh, knock him, uh, that's the physical punishment without using any weapon. And if he doesn't listen, then we need to use a suitable weapons, suitable weapons, indicating that uh, serious actions that uh, might take place. So suitable weapon, usually uh, uh, in the context of Malaysia, they use a rotan, which is a, a small stick uh, to, to, uh, to slash them. And then to enforce a regulation by resorting to a, uh, to a cadre of police. So if the person does not listen, so maybe uh, the matter brought to the police and the police will uh, imprison them uh, uh, based on the, uh, what is uh, uh, in their standard of procedures, uh, procedures in among the uh, police. So uh, these are the 10 steps uh, that is actually very general uh, that Imam Al-Ghazali mentioned uh, in any da'wah or any action of uh, hisbah uh, we should be uh, practicing and also in the case of uh, his official hisbah uh, they should also do the, the same. So now in the case of uh, Islamic uh, financial services industry uh, so what well, uh, the role of his what can uh, what way the hisba can be practiced so first thing is that uh, this hisba actually gives us the basic uh, foundation that uh, in the islamic finance industry in uh, there should be a regulation there should be monitoring uh, 
and dash it should be governed there should be transparency because we can see in the in the history of islam that uh, even during the uh, the time of uh, abbasid and uh, uh, they used to monitor the market and there was official institution to to check uh, the counterfeit coins uh, to in terms of the the wrong inaccurate uh, scale or measurement so that and it, there was severe punishment for that so in the modern day con uh, context uh, we also need to uh, to monitor the system as uh, in especially in islamic uh, banking uh, there are many who choose uh, islamic banks uh, but they say uh, they uh, islamic banks they say they are following the sharia uh, but in it may happen that some case in sometimes they they violate the sharia uh, and in order to make sure that they are following the sharia we must have supervision we must have audit uh, to make sure that uh, what they said is uh, uh, what uh, they are doing is according to uh, the sharia so in the present context of islamic financial services industry so which are the can be the hisba institutions at present what are the institutions can play the uh, role of um, uh, hisba so the first thing that comes into our mind is the the central bank and the securities commission so central bank has a very important role to to ensure and to monitor and to regulate that the financial institutions uh, do, uh, the islamic financial institutions they are following the sharia so there is a check and balance they are monitored and when there is a wrong practice the central bank will take action Similarly, the Securities Commission. Securities Commission is responsible for the Sharia compliance, shares, and sukuk, um, uh, and other uh, capital market and uh, market instrument. While Central Bank is also in, in charge of the financial institutions, means the banking institutions, and also the takaful. So they uh, may play the role, or they can uh, put, uh, they can have uh, some divisions that will be. Uh, playing the role of of hisba to ensure that uh, the financial institutions are following the sharia so and then uh, specifically the national uh, sharia advisory council like we in malaysia we have uh, sharia advisory council under the bank negara and also uh, under the securities commission at the national level so they can also observe uh, the the uh, sharia practices and every Islamic bank, they also have the, the Sharia committee. So it is also the, uh, the responsibility and also the role of the uh, committee that they will play the role of Hisba. Uh, they will supervise, they will monitor and uh, uh, to ensure that there is uh, uh, no violation of the Sharia or if there is a violation or non-halal income, it is purified, means given to the charity. And another very important thing is the audit. So in every company, there is an audit committee on top of the, uh, the CEO. So the audit committee's role is to get uh, the audit report from the, from the auditors. So the audit is, is, a, ve uh, is a very classic example of, of HISBA for financial institutions. So for Islamic uh, banks or Islamic financial institutions, the, the Sharia audit uh, is actually playing the role of Hisba. So uh, someone who is an auditor, he also uh, playing uh, the role of Muhtasib, that he is also doing the Hisba, is checking whether there is any violations in the transactions uh, or in any dealings of the banks. Similarly, the risk management committee, uh, uh, they also can have a um, look and they can also regulate uh, the financial institutions. Uh, so the risk management, the thing is good in risk uh, management is that um, they are more comprehensive and they will, uh, they maybe can give warning before the things happen. Uh, so uh, they are also play, uh, partly playing the role of uh, the HISPA uh, or in joining what is uh, good and forbidding what is bad and also ensuring that uh, there, is, uh, there is no uh, violation of the Sharia in their financial dealings. So that's um, uh, generally uh, all about uh, Hisbah. Um, 
So I have already discussed what is the hisba in and uh, how was hisba in the Islamic civilization. What are the conditions uh, to do hisba, and in, in what is the practice of hisba in the modern day financial institutions? Uh, so we uh, you can study further in this uh, article. The institution of hisba is roles in nurturing a fair and uh, just economic system in Islam, uh, which was uh, presented in the National Conference on Islamic Economics uh, in 2009 uh, for your further reading, and also the book on Sharia Aspects of Business and Finance, uh, published by INSEF. So with that, uh, I thank you. Jazakumullahu uh, khairul jaza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.